Hello people, so happy 20th anniversary to One Piece. Once again we've got a pretty entertaining episode of One Piece. Now unlike the previous two that we've gotten in the one arc, it focuses on one, pl one plot point and it doesn't go all over the place. So it focuses on Luffy and Curry and Otama, the little girl, being introduced in the previous episode, explaining why she ended up in the situation she did and also getting to learn the backstory of how she met Ace, all that. So. And I've got to say, it's one of those episodes where it makes you forget about the action and makes you actually take a good look about the scenery and the art style of Wano. The fact that it's been, the de the level of detail on the country of Wano is amazing. Luffy obviously being hungry, so Atama immediately wants to get him something to eat. So they put the ship, and I actually forgot about this, they actually put the sunny underneath the beach of curry so it couldn't be seen. The problem with that is they did that on Hoki Island and it was kind of like is accommodated by a bunch of other uh, big mom pirates led by Katakuri. So I don't think it could be any different, but we'll see. But either way, there's nothing on the ship to eat. So Atama says, I'm going to make you something. So they go through. So they ride on Kamichio and I guess the baboon. And Atama tells how she was able to, how she got captured and she was about to, she about to be sold off, I guess, to sold off by the members of the Beast Pirates before Luffy saved her. And the reason why she did is because they they nicked her rice and it was the only food she had at the time. And she opened her mouth about the Kazuki clan and apparently that's again that's touching that then you're in big trouble. So they overheard that, they try, tried to kidnap her. Obviously we know what happened with that. A good indication about the art style and the scenery of Wano, and it's very consistent throughout most of this arc, so it's a good thing to see. I like the art style and choice they made when they had Otama cooking the rice for Luffy. It, it, it's a different style, like an artistic choice, and we saw this when Luffy and the rest were on the Sunny, they were approaching Wano and the borders of Wano. They used the same art style to, to, to a certain extent, so I thought that was kind of cool. Otama cooks up the rice, Luffy munches all of it, and she, she mentions that she doesn't have seconds because that's all the rice she has. So Luffy kind of like, he's like, I want in seconds, but then he makes up a lie saying, no, I'm full, so you don't need to make me any more, knowing that's all the rice she has. And what's even really messed up is the fact that how that's the only food she had and she hadn't eaten in a while. So And even the time was like, you're, you're a terrible liar. So this is where things get messed up because when you see Luffy and Atama going through the forest, you see the a shot of the river right and you see the water and how it's contaminated with uh, oil and you get the explanation to why that is as the episode goes along and one thing I did notice as it's being explained you see Luffy's expression completely change like he was kind of happy to meet Tama but then when he realized the situation you see that sort of serious look on his face which means serious Luffy means more epic we saw that in the previous episode so yeah, so as Luffy is going to be pissed from here on in. To stop her stomach from growling, she drinks the water, obviously con contaminated. Then we get introduced to the character of Hitetsu, and, which is really funny because when Luffy meets him for the first time, he kind of sees, he thinks it's Usopp, because of the, obviously the big nose. Obviously it's not Usopp, he's on the katana. And if you notice the katana, it's all that is, but it's... It looks very reminiscent to another sword. Anyway, Hitetsu gets pissed off because obviously eating the rice, he notices why are you eating the rice, why are you here? Atama should be cooking for you. He tries to attack Luffy while Atama's drinking the water. She notices the, I guess the outburst and then she tries to explain the situation. And then when Hitetsu mentions like how Atama hasn't eaten anything and this was actually her birthday to eat the rice, she has to make up the money in order to cut the rice and she got the money but she, obviously she gave it to Luffy, so now Luffy knows the situation and obviously Atama's like, she wants to be a Konoichi, a, a, Konoichi, a ninja, so that's pretty cool she, she's actually in, imitating throwing shurikens while she's trying to stop her stomach from growling and she actually collapses because obviously she, she drank contaminated water which is poison to her and Luffy reads the situation after being explained to her by Hitetsu and Luffy just asks, straight up asks, like, why don't you just leave if it's that dangerous? Why don't you just move on to another place? And he technically explains, we can't because we're waiting for a certain pirate. We've been waiting for someone. All these time has been waiting for someone. He technically also mentions he, he's waiting for someone too, so I'm still curious who that is. They can't leave, so they're waiting for someone. So obviously they're trying to make up the money for what's going on. They 
bring up the fact that they were attacked at least a year ago, and we also come to find out the, the place was attacked by none other than a headliner, X Drake, uh, with one of the supernovas. So we knew X Drake was already working on the Kaido, so he's the one that devastated. I guarantee you, because of the connection with Atama and Luffy, I think that's going to lead up to something later down the line. You saw, how, remember what Luffy said when he met up with Capone after he shot up Peckham's? Remember what he said? He said, Can I punch you first? Because you shot up Peckham's. So I could definitely see something like this, like Luffy, but on a much bigger scale. Like Luffy, the place has been littered, it's been destroyed. And then we get the backstory as to how Ace met Otama. Much like Luffy, he he crashed on on the on the beach of Curry. And what's really interesting is like the I guess the citizens of Curry actually stole the food that was on Ace's ship and they tied Ace and the rest of his crew up, but he's able to free himself. But she's it but he notices that a time of eating and she's enjoying herself, so he smiles and he just breaks free. He, he fires up, breaks free, and then just asks. He casually walks up to her and it looks like she's about to attack her to retaliate, but no. He just asks, "Hey, did it? Did, it, did you enjoy the meal?" And that's where the bond kicks in. So it's it's kind of cool. And I love the also attention to detail when the story is being told about Ace. You see the flames, and the flames in the outline. So I thought that was a neat little touch. He's learn, one is learning about Ace and his adventures on Wano. And he realizes, oh, he crashed landed on Wano too. Yeah, the parallels are there. And we already knew Ace was on Wano, but we didn't have much explanation on it because we knew Ace made a hat for Oz Jr. We found that out during, during the Marine Board. So now it's cool to see what Ace actually did while he was on. Maybe just point, point, points out like, Ace has died, like he's not coming back, he's he died, he just casually says it. And Atama's in denial, it's heart wrenching because you know deep down inside how Luffy reacted when that happened to him when he was there. And so many years later, now he's laying this onto somebody else who cares deeply for Ace, it's obvious. Now she breaks down, she actually passes out. And he texts us, like, How could you just say that casually? Don't you have a soul? And it's like, and Luffy, his explanation makes sense, but at the same time, he's being a little bit, a little bit sensitive to the situation. So, he's like, his reasoning is like, yo, so you can, you've got no reason to stay here, so you may as well just get out of this town. But that's when he texts and says, "I'm also looking for somebody." So we don't really know who that is, but I can, I can assume it may be somebody related to, maybe it's Kinemon. I don't know, because the fact that Otama said mentioned the Kazuki kind of kind of makes you wonder where he Tetsu comes from. X Drake is the cause for Thomas suffering mostly. Obviously, the Kaido is the root of all problems, and Luffy, again, Luffy's expression has changed when he finds that out. Like, it's the batteries that, that produce the artificial devil fruits, that all the waste goes in the river, obviously, it contaminates the water, the situation with Thomas explained. So, again, Kaido is the root of all problems. How do you take the source down? And also, they can't move to the flower capital because there's most. There's most places that are governed by Orochi, so the episode pretty much ends with Basil Hawkins. I mean, it's kind of obvious who that was <clears throat> on the Dead and the previous episode. So he moves in and he's obviously moving to Luffy's location. But he simply says, Don't report this to Kaido, I'll do all this myself. So um, is he going to fight Luffy? And it's been a while since I read this in the manga, so I kind of forgot all that, about that stuff with. X Drake actually been the one that destroyed Otama's village, so that's I kind of forgot about that, so it's kind of a neat little reminder to me. But all in all, I thought it was a steady episode. It moved the episode along. Obviously, if you saw the preview, it's in filler next week. I mentioned this last episode review. Well, next two episodes are filler. Obviously, it relates to One Piece film Stampede movie that begins August 9th. <clears throat> Curious, I may end up reviewing it because it's going to be the return of Boa Hancock, which is pretty cool, and also Luffy interacting. So that could be really fun. I know a lot of people may have a problem with this cut into a filler, but I think, given where the arc is, I don't think it's a bad spot to have a filler, honestly, because the arc just begun. So, it's only two episodes, and then we can move along where I think the plot's going to be possibly Hawkins versus Luffy. So the one has just begun and it's already looking living up to the hype. So I can't wait to see what's next with this filler. That's gonna do it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts 
down below in the comments. Like this video if you did, subscribe to help more One Piece. Catch you guys later. Thanks guys. Bye.